Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good not, not bad. Not in unison, but not bad. How many of you have played the game Red Light, Green Light? Okay, so you know the rules, right? Yeah. Do you think we should play in church? Yeah. Spoken like a true girl. Spoken like a true guy. The guys are like, yeah. The girl's like, ah, oh, no. But you know what? If Pastor says we can, I think we can. Let's do it. Okay. We won't tell your parents, so shh. It's our secret. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to gather around the baptismal font because we just did a baptism and that was kind of cool because our life with Jesus begins around the baptismal font. It begins here. And so kind of the journey that we take in faith with Jesus starts here. So why don't you all come down here. Come, 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 come. See this water. Can you play red, white, green light in those new shoes? Okay, good. Then we are set to go there. Very cool. Oh, so you have to walk really fast. Yeah, okay. Hey, what are you doing? Okay, so we have water here. Monica was just baptized. How many of you have been baptized? Good, good. I know you guys have. I baptized you. I baptized you as well. Okay, so a few of you. Very cool. Now, I'm going to go down to that end of the aisle. We're going to play red light, green light. And here, in case you've forgotten the rules... Okay, I don't, I don't like to count, so I'm just going to skip the numbers. So we're just going to call it red light, green light, but thank you. So you'll know what to do. Here's what's going to happen. If I'm facing this way and say green light, you have to do... No, wait, I wouldn't do that. I would do this and go green light, and you can start running toward me. Kind of like this. If I turn around and say red light, you have to stop. If I see anybody move, I'm sending you back to the baptismal font. The, the starting line. Yes, the starting light. So, baptismal font. So you might want to kind of get all light in line here so you can all start out equally. If I see anybody move when I turn around, you're going back to the beginning. No. Yeah, find a place so you feel like you got a fair start, sort of. Like, you know, there's no prize. We're just going to have fun. Okay, so, if I'm facing this way, you can't move. If I turn around and I say the other words, like green light, you can move. So let's practice. Green light. Excuse me, I'm facing you. I was just seeing if you were paying attention. Ha! Okay. Green light. Red light. No feet moving or you'll have to go back. Green light. Red light. Oh, I think you were sliding some there. Okay, so now if I was playing really mean, I might send him all the way back because he's really close and I might say I saw his feet moving, but I don't think it will all go green light. Oh, okay. He got here first. Go back up and sit down. Good job. Is it hard sometimes when you're playing that game to stop and stay still? Because you want to kind of sneak forward a bit more, don't you? You want to get to the person because if we had kept playing, you'd get to be the signal and I'd have to go and run. So it's really fun to run and move, but it's hard to stop and stay still. That's what Jesus was talking about today in the Bible. I think he knew how to play red light really well because he was telling his disciples sometimes we get the green light to go do things like Jesus said in the story a dad went to his sons you gotta stay because now we're doing red light so don't move a dad went to his sons to say will you go to work he was giving the green light to go to work and they said no we're not gonna do it we don't want to listen to you how many of you sometimes say no to your moms and dads or grandparents or teachers they ask you to do something and you say, no. How about, how many of you sometimes say no, but then you think about it and go and do it? You change your mind. That's what Jesus was talking about. We sometimes don't like listening to parents or teachers. I know. We like to do our own thing. But Jesus says we have to keep our ears open to listen to people like moms and dads and teachers because we have to learn how to live with people who tell us when to do things. So if your mom or dad or grandparent or aunt or uncle or babysitter said, help me clean up, should you do that? Yes. If a friend said to you at school, let's go tease that other person, should you do that? No. See, we have to listen and think, is it a red light? 
or is it a green light? And Jesus always says, watch out for those lights, because sometimes they're red and we have to stop. Sometimes they're green and we have to go. We have to ask Jesus to help us figure that out. Help clean it up. High five. That is great. <laughs> Cleaning up after playing is a really good green light. Do it. Always clean up after you play. There's a green light for us. Okay, let's think about red lights and green lights in our life. I'm going to talk to your moms and dads about that some. After we pray, usually there isn't children's church today because it's the fourth Sunday. Now you don't, don't count that, but there usually isn't. But today there's a special one. So anyone that is four years old through first grade, if you're older than first grade, you get to stay here and listen to me. If you're younger than first grade, you get to go to the special children's church today. Okay, so fold your hands and repeat after me. Dear Jesus, help us stop at those red lights and go when we see green lights. Amen. Okay, you can either go to children's church or back to your seats, and I will see you later. So if you are first grade or younger, you can go to children's church. Okay, well, if you go to children's church, you can go today, maybe. Just guys, go figure it out. I don't know where you go either. You want to stay here? No? Okay. I am losing all kinds of things today. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today we begin a sermon series that may by next week clear out this entire building and no one comes back. If that's the case, I made a really bad decision. But it's sometimes a topic that we don't like to talk about, don't like to think about, don't want to bring up because it makes us uncomfortable and it's called stewardship. This time of year we talk about stewardship just because we do. Or because it's fall and we think about Thanksgiving, we think about harvest, or because the church is working on a budget for next year, all kinds of reasons. I'm doing it because I just got here a few months ago and now you're all back from summer and all that stuff, except today is a four day weekend and some people are gone. But we're starting today because stewardship isn't about church budget. It isn't about Thanksgiving time and being grateful and all that stuff. Stewardship is the way that we think about life and how every part of our life is in tune with God. And so if it makes us uncomfortable, that's okay, because Jesus certainly intended it to make the disciples and the Pharisees and the teachers of the law uncomfortable as well. Because it begins with today, the parable and the whole story is about authority and whose authority are you under. And the bedrock of stewardship is all about authority. Now, if you think stewardship is only giving to the church budget, you have been misled. If stewardship makes you feel guilty that you aren't doing enough, you've been misled. That's not the intent of stewardship. Stewardship is about how do I manage that which I am given to by God? How do I steward, manage, how do I keep in line that which needs to be kept in line for the sake of God's kingdom? It's not about asking for money. It's not about giving to anything. It's about is my life under the authority and the balance of Jesus Christ. That's the foundation. Today's sermon title is Being Honest because that's exactly what Jesus attacks in his parable of the two sons. To set the situation up, Jesus has now entered Jerusalem. He's gone to the temple. He's teaching in the temple. And the leaders of the temple come to him and say, by whose authority are you doing this? And then if you tell us, does he have the authority to tell you to do that? So they're questioning his authority on two levels. Why is he doing it? And who sent him? And then can they do it? Well, Jesus looks at them and thinks, I'm not going to answer your authority question until I figure out your integrity issues. So let me ask you a question. Do you support the baptism of John? He challenges their integrity. And that's exactly why they back away. Because they will not put themselves under the authority of God. They challenge Jesus' authority because they don't want to come under the authority of God. And if I can discount Jesus, I can discount his teaching, and I can be my own God. And that's not just a Pharisee and teachers of the law attitude. That's our attitude sometimes 
as well. If I can find a reason to discount why I have to bring my time and my talent and my treasure under the authority of Jesus, if I can say I don't want to give to that project or I don't want to give my time there, I don't want to give my talent there, if I can say the church isn't using my money the way I want to, the church doesn't respect my talents, if I can discount the authority of God and somehow how it applies to me, then I can step back and say I don't have to do it. It's all about red light, green light. Can I inch a little bit farther up and not get caught? Because you see, authority is an interesting thing. We never mind authority until we bump into it. We don't mind boundaries as long as we aren't bumping into the boundary. It's only when we get to the edge and there's a boundary we bump into that we don't like authority. And that's important to know. That if you are feeling challenged by anything when it comes to stewardship and authority, it's because now it's bumping into your territory and you're saying, wait a minute, God's crossed a line here. This is a place God doesn't belong. Well, that's a problem because God belongs everywhere. It's his world. You just happen to be in it. So it's about what we bump up against. And when we talk about stewardship, there's the stewardship of time and talent and treasure. And to be straight, the talent that we're talking about isn't your spiritual gifts. It's the fact that God has made you talented people. He has given you all kinds of abilities. Spiritual gifts are different from talents. You have talents. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. The two boys, the two brothers, the one sitting at home. Dad comes into the room and says, will you go work in the field today? No. I am watching TV. My favorite show is on. I am not getting up. Dad leaves. The son says, well, that wasn't very good. I do live in Dad's house. I am watching his TV. I'm eating his food. I, hmm, maybe I'll do it. So he goes and does it. The second son, Dad, will you, Dad says to the son, will you go and work today? Oh, yes, I will. I will do whatever you say, Daddy. Dad leaves the room, the kid kicks back, puts the TV on, closes the door, and just stays put. It's pretty obvious to us which one followed the dad's will. We can get that. But the question is, which son are we, the first or the second? We always want to divide it and say, am I one or two? Let me tell you, you're both. Because it's two different questions. It's one, the authority question, and the second one is the integrity question. And we have to wrestle with both. The first son had authority issues. Dad said go. He said no. Okay, I'll do it. That's authority issue. The second son had integrity issues. Dad said go. He said yes. Didn't follow through. There's an integrity issue there. I know what I'm supposed to do. I just don't want to do it. And rather than saying no and being forthright with it, I'm going to just kind of lie about it, get that off my back, and then go fly under the radar for a while. There's an integrity issue there. We have to wrestle with both. When we bump up against how we use our time, our talent, and our treasure, do we have the submission to God's authority when he says, be good stewards of all I give you? And if we say yes, we'll do that. Then we become the second son. Then get up and do it. How does that work in our lives? Our time. All of our time, every breath, we take is a gift from God. Every moment of the day is about stewardship to God. And so I challenge you, when do we steal back our time from God and hand out dollars of our time, amounts of our time to Satan? Well, here's how we steal from God with our time. When you get busy gossiping back and forth, what good is that? Oh, I'm just gonna pray with somebody, but let me tell you all the dirty secrets we have to pray about. It's the gossip prayer chain. Churches are famous for it. Well, let me just tell you how this person bugs me. And we begin to gossip back and forth. And we are stealing time from God when that time could be used more productively. But we suck it in with what we talk about. Or it's just a little addiction. Just a few cans of beer. Just a few shots of whatever we shoot. <laughs> whatever drug it is, and we are stealing time from God as we numb our pain, as we fill our lives with gossip, as we sit back and do what I want to do because it's my time, I've worked hard, I'm owed this, I work hard, I play hard, leave me alone, it's mine. 
That's an authority issue there. It's not yours. I'm sorry, it's God's. Because unless you created yourself, it's God's time. And every moment that we steal to do something that we think I have to do, I want to do it, it's my right to do it, we have said to God, you don't have authority in this part of my life. You don't have authority in my addictions. You don't have authority in my words. You don't have authority in what I look at on the internet. You don't have authority in these areas. That stewardship question is every moment of every day is God's because we've been baptized into Jesus Christ. And what part of your life needs to come under God's authority in what you do with your time, how you spend your time? Is it in the way of righteousness? Jesus connected the first son to tax collectors and prostitutes and said they, first of all, were grabbing their own time, their own talent, their own treasure, doing their own thing until they realized there was a way of righteousness that was different, and then they changed. They committed their time and talent and treasure to God. So where are we? Are we grabbing a hold of that time or are we saying, no, because of Jesus Christ, the way of righteousness in my life is different. The time on the internet is different. The time with my drinking is different. The time of my gossip is stopping because my time is too precious to God to be used that way. And our talents, our talents, that which we use at work, that's what we use to get ahead, whether it's carpentry, whether it's lawn keeping, whether it's just the way you talk, whether it's your charis charismatic personality, whatever makes you up, that is the talent God has given you. And do you use it to the glory of God or do you use it to get your own way? Let me tell you, I had a talent as a kid that I could just smile at my mom and get away with murder. It was a talent, and I worked long and hard to perfect it. Because mom would say sometimes, well, how can I be angry at that? Cha-ching, I won. <laughs> it might be cute in a three-year-old. It might be cute in an eight-year-old. It's pretty obnoxious in a 40-year-old. Can I smile and get away with it? Your wife goes, no, get up and do something. A talent misused. A talent twisted, a charming personality that's not to bring joy to the world, but to bring satisfaction to me when I want it. Whatever your talent is, it can be turned around and used for your own good, your own ends, or it can be used to bring joy to others and service to others. And you know, you know when you're twisting your little way around to get what you want, justifying at work, why you can just take some time off because you work so hard. I just heard somebody tell me, well, my salary is lower than what I'm worth, so I'm only working half the time when I'm in the office because that means my salary is actually justifying how much I'm making. What? You're stealing half the time? Well, I don't really get paid for a full-time job, so I'm not going to do a full-time job. There's a lot of justification going on there. How often do we justify ourselves and figure what we do is right because I have a way of stepping back from authority and doing what I want to do with the talents I've been given? And then the touchy one, your treasure. I don't have enough money to make ends meet. How can I give any more money? It's not about giving money to any place. It's about saying everything that you have in your wallet, everything you have at home is a gift from God given to you. And are you using it in a way that's going to further the kingdom of God? That 30th pair of shoes, that 12th winter jacket. Sorry, I know, I've got one coming tomorrow. I have an issue with jackets. I am so grateful to be living in a place where I can justify having an entire closet full of jackets because I love jackets. Do I need 12 jackets? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Finally. How often do we spend money because we want it, and then we wonder why we don't have enough or how do we give it? Every time we spend a dime, are we thinking, is this going to the glory of God? Is my 12th jacket, which arrives tomorrow, I'll show it to you sometime, is my 12th jacket actually bringing glory to God? Probably not, but it's going to be glorifying on my body. And we laugh at it, and it's true, but do we actually stop before we spend a dime and say, does this bring glory to God? Is it necessary? Because if it's not necessary, then it's wasteful, and that's not to the glory of God. 
do we stop when it comes to our addictions? Cigarettes or alcohol? Does it come with the handbags that we buy, the shoes that we buy, the junk food that we buy, the things that we don't really need but we just work so hard I deserve it? Do we stop and say, does this dollar and my spending of this dollar bring glory to God? Or is it just to satisfy me? And sometimes satisfying you is okay. A jacket is important. A purse is important. Shoes are important. But when is enough enough? When it stops being glory to God and starts being your obsession, your needs, your point of bragging, whatever that is, we've stepped over the line with stewardship in our time, in our talent, and our money. It's all about the way of righteousness and living in a way that everything I have is consciously given back to the glory of God. That's where it starts. That's the foundation. And the tough question is, will we be honest with ourselves in this sermon series to say, am I really taking that moment to say, is this use of time, is this use of talent, or this use of treasure being brought under God's authority and given to his glory. And if not, then stop. We must think about how we can take the time and talent and treasure and use it in a way that shows the glory of God to the rest of the world. This is the beginning, the foundation. We'll keep talking about how these gifts are given back to God in a way to further the kingdom of God. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, may that peace keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. Thank you, Pastor.